today and the Lord's brought you this far and I, I and I know that we're leaning on Jesus today for everything that we we need he's he's our source of help and I'm so thankful that we serve a mighty God and I, I uh, well let me get brother Chris to stand and offer a blessing on the lesson today everybody bow your head as he prays Amen. Thank you, Brother Chris. Appreciate his prayers because I know they're coming straight from his heart. Amen. Appreciate what God is going to do in this lesson. Now, last Sunday, if you'll remember, those of you that were in attendance, uh, we, we, our lesson was entitled Calming the Storm, and it was a little storm. But I'm going to tell you, this lesson today could be named Calming the Storm because our lesson today is about a different kind of a storm, but that's not the title of our lesson uh, but if you'll remember, last Sunday we were in Mark chapter 4. Today we're going to be in Mark chapter 5. And the Lord had told his disciples, let us pass over to the other side. Well, today's, today's lesson picks up on the other side where the Lord had told the disciples to pass over to. And, of course, we remember from last Sunday the, in the midst of crossing over the disciples, they, there was a violent storm that they met with, but the disciples had enough wherewithal to wake the Lord up and and asked him, Lord, don't you care that we're perishing? And so the Lord immediately spoke, peace be still to the wind. And there was a great calm. And you know what? Our God is still speaking peace to a lot of, lot of storms in our lives. And I'm so thankful that he is the peace speaker. And today we're picking up uh, this story in Mark 5 uh, as the disciples and Jesus get over on the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And I'd like to start reading in Mark 5 and 1. And we'll, we'll go through... Uh, all the way to verse 20, but I'm not going to read it. I'm going to take it verse, verse by verse, and we'll comment on it. And Mark 5 and 1 says, And they came over unto the other side of the sea in the country of the Gadarenes. So Jesus and his disciples, they're on the other side. They were on, on the side that was close to Capernaum, but now they've crossed over the Sea of Galilee, and they are in the country of the Gadarenes. Uh, the storm that the Lord and his disciples had just come through could not keep them from their destination because the Lord being who he is, being a God of compassion and love, uh, he, he had a mission to accomplish and there was nothing that was going to stop the Lord from doing what he was called to do. And if you'll notice, they came to the country of the Gadarenes. Uh, uh, Gadara was an ancient city of Palestine, a member of the Decapolis, and that word Decapolis means, Deca means ten. So there was actually ten cities uh, that, that were in that area where Jesus is about to come upon the seashore there. And um, it's located just southeast of the Sea of Galilee in Jordan. And according uh, to a commentary, when I bring out something, if it's not in the scripture, but something that I have read, I try to preface that that is from the life application uh, Bible, their, their notes, and it said this region was predominantly inhabited by Gentiles. In other words, there were Jews there, but it was mostly Gentiles that were in this part of the land. So Mark 5 and 2 says, and when he was come out of the ship, talking about the Lord, immediately, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Now, I started to bring one of Brother Creasy's big old chains into the lesson today and let you all just look and see how strong a man. But I think you all can get the picture that the man was so possessed that even literally chains could not hold him. And, and so uh, the welcoming party that came to meet Jesus and his disciples that day was a man that was demon-possessed. Now, now I, I don't know about you. I, I, don't, I don't believe for one moment that this took the Lord by surprise. But I kind of got a feeling those disciples was a little bit taken back, you know, by the welcoming that they got there that day. Maybe they had heard about this man, you know. I don't know. Uh, the Bible doesn't tell us. But, but uh, this man was, was definitely a challenge probably in, in the minds of the disciples. But to the Lord, 
the Lord came here for the, the Lord was on a mission. I believe he came for this purpose, okay, for that man. And uh, the Bible said uh, that uh, that his, his, he lived, did I, what, what verse did I finish up, verse 3? Anyway, the, that welcoming party that day was a man that lived among the tombs, and, and it must have been a, a, a pitiful sight seeing that man that day to the disciples. Uh, it, it, it probably was definitely a shocking experience, but again, I don't believe it was any surprise to the Lord at all. Um, why, I, why do you say that, Sister Chrissy? Because the Bible tells us in Luke 19 and 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. He was on a mission to save that, that man that was possessed that day. And the latter verse of, of uh, the latter part of verse 3 of Mark 5 says, and no man could bind him, no not with chains. It said no man. But when Jesus wasn't just any ordinary man, he was God manifest in the flesh. Uh, oh, there were others that tried to bind this demon-possessed man, even with fetters and chains. And, and I read something interesting. Uh, this was just a commentary that I read. But, uh, you know, uh, you read a lot of things and you can't say this is scriptural and this is not scriptural. But they said in some ways... Um, some, I believe it was the Romans, that they even took two pieces of wood that were fixed where they would match up and they would put a person's hands inside that, that wood and nail, their, nail the wood together to hold their hands. Something kind of like what a handcuff would be that we, we have knowledge of today. So I don't know how they tried to bind this demon-possessed man, Brother Joy, but whatever, however they did it, it wasn't successful. Because the Bible said no man could bind him. No, not with chains. And so verse 4 says, Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. So the demons inside this man uh, could not be tamed just by ordinary man. Fetters or shackles and chains, they were nothing to this demon-possessed man's power who had strength unlike any normal human being. Uh, and not only was he a threat to others, but he was a danger to himself. Amen. The Bible said in verse 5, and always, look at that word, always. Now, to somebody that's being tormented, uh, always is a long time. Right. We, we just try to get our mind thinking along the line of where it was at. But this said, and always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs. What was he doing? Crying and cutting himself with stones. Now, when I, I read that, I, I thought about the false prophets of Baal. Remember when Elijah said, let the God that answers by fire be God? And you remember how that they, they the, the false prophets of Baal, they built an altar and they put their sacrifice on it, but they didn't put any fire under it. And from morning till noon, they cried to Baal and said, Oh, Baal, hear us. And, and then by the afternoon time, they had gotten so uh, frustrated by Baal not answering him, which Baal couldn't answer because there's not but one God. Amen. And, uh, and so they, they began to take stones and cut themselves. So, so when the Bible talked about how this man cut himself with stones, it, it kind of made me think about how the, the false prophets of Baal did when they cut themselves with stone. And... It's sad to say, but there are people that, that do actually cut their bodies this day and time. They have a mental problem, and they cut themselves. Now, I don't know what that's called. I didn't look that up, but, uh, but it kind of relates to what we're talking about today, self-mutilation. That's what the man was doing. He was, he was destroying his own body uh, by cutting himself, and, and he was tormented night and day because of the demons living inside of him. And, and I think sometimes we just read the Bible and, oh, it's a story, but I don't think we can understand just what torment this man was going through. Uh, he was not just oppressed, he was possessed. It means on the inside of him, Brother Billy, his mind was tormented by these demons that, that was living on the inside of, inside of him. Uh, he didn't live in his own home. He lived in tombs. He lived where dead people were placed. Now, it's okay, and I, I go to the cemeteries from time, time to time, put flowers on loved ones' graves, 
But I'm telling you the truth. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't dwell there. <laughs> I just go and visit where my loved ones are. But he was living among where dead bodies were laying in tombs. And, and what a pitiful, to me, I see, I see a pitiful picture of a human being there living among dead bodies. And, 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 and so his life was nothing but miserableness, wretchedness. And, 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 uh, and uh, again, not only did he live in the tombs, but he cut himself with stones. And you know, um, well, let, let, let me just not go there because I've got this scripture that I want to bring out just a little bit later on. But uh, uh, Jesus was about to step into this tormented man's life and, God, and the God of glory was fixing to bring a miracle about in his life. And, and so uh, the thing of it is, folks, Jesus is still the same today. He's not physically walking among us, but he is here today to minister and bring miracles in the lives of God's people. He's still the same God. Amen. If he would take the time to leave a place where he had been teaching and, and healing people to come over to the other side of that water there and land on that uh, other side of that, that uh, Sea of Galilee for one man, I'm telling you, he's here today for you today, even if you were the only person that needed. But I believe there's more needs than just one person in this place. But what I want us to understand is Jesus is here today to meet your need, whatever it is. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Michael. I, I, just, I just want that, that understood, that, that he's, he's here today, and he, he's in this service. He's with us to yeah. take care of whatever miracle you need to take place. Uh, Mark 5 and 6 says, but when he saw Jesus afar off, who saw him? That man that was tormented, that was full of demons. The Bible said he ran and worshipped him. Now probably most people that came anywhere near him, when they saw who he was, they ran the other way. Yeah, right. I mean, that's just my, my, my thought on it. Because he's a, he's a man that's demon possessed. Um, he's, he's got, I'm going to say... I think he looks like a wild man. I mean, he lives in a tomb. He smells like dead people. Who wants to be around somebody in that condition? Okay? So I, I believe he was used to people running from him, and here he is running to somebody. Uh, probably this is the first time that this man ever looked into the eyes of somebody that showed him compassion and showed him love. He'd never seen any, any and never... But here's the thing. It was the demons inside him that also recognized who, who was in the midst of them. Right. While Jesus was on the other side preaching and teaching to those people and trying to convince them that who he was, he didn't have to convince this man. The demons inside him knew who he was. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so when he saw Jesus, the Bible said, afar off, uh, I believe he experienced something. Something something got a hold of him that he had never felt before. He, I, I believe he saw, as I said, I believe he saw love. I believe he saw compassion. I believe he saw mercy. And most of all, he saw grace when he looked at Jesus. And his response to the Lord was that he ran and worshipped him. You know, that in itself tells me something there that probably the demons inside that man, if they had any control, would not have allowed him to do what he did if they could control him. But I'm going to tell you, when Jesus steps on the scene, the enemy has to submit to what God is about to do. Here was a man that wasn't trying to, to bind him, uh, but here was a man that was trying to set him free. And he had never, he had never witnessed this. Something, something inside of him, I believe, uh, leaped up within him because uh, I believe he felt some hope that he'd never felt before. I believe he felt a surge of a power that he'd never felt before. Now, those of you that know me, sometimes I, I don't hug everybody's neck. I, I do sometimes. I say, "Are you okay with me hugging your neck?" And some people, I just hug your neck. And some people, I just tap you on the shoulder. Well, we're, we're in Cracker Barrel Thursday. In case you all haven't noticed, I've got spots all over my face because the dermatologist got a hold of me. And I asked the Lord, Lord, please don't let it be a distraction, and here I am calling your attention to it. But anyway, I walked by this young lady, and, um, and I just greeted her as I'm walking by, and I just patted her on the shoulder. Well, I thought, well, that's taking a lot of liberty with a stranger you don't even know to pat her on the shoulder. 
So when we got ready to leave, I walked up, because not invading her space again, but I said, I wanted to tell you that I did not mean anything when I tapped you on your shoulder. I said, but I'm a pastor's wife, and I just kind of do those things. She said, oh, I felt a surge of energy when you touched me. <laughs> didn't want you to feel whatever that by touching you was invading you know your your personal space but I just do those things some of you I didn't hug your neck but I kind of patted you on the shoulder this morning and you know so uh, anyway I just took that liberty with her and I felt like I needed to explain to her why I did that uh, but but I believe this man felt a surge of energy that he had never felt before yeah. and I just feel doodads running all up and down me when I'm talking about this because I, I just believe there was something that he, he knew what misery was all about. But I believe he was feeling something beside. I believe he was feeling an awesome presence yeah. that he had never felt before. Yeah. Uh, and, and so here we see the Lord. He's about to step into this tormented man's life. And he is fixing to change everything about this situation. And nothing could hold this man back from his worship of the Lord. Now, now, can I just say this without trying to be offensive to anybody? Sometimes we let things hold us back from worshiping our God. Come on, tell it, tell it. Thank you, Sister Sue. I heard her. Yes, we do. We let people's opinion hold us back. Yeah. We let what pe we think people are thinking hold us back. Right. And some of us are just more quieter and resolved than others. Some of us are very loud, and you know who we are. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but God has done something for every one of us. Amen. He woke us up this morning, did he not? Amen. He gave us the strength to come Amen. through that door, did he not? Hallelujah. And did the word of God tell us, let everything that hath breath Amen. praise you the Lord? So we've all got something to worship the Lord about. Now, I know there's a difference between worship and praise, but let me just say we've all got something to, to be thankful for today. We've all got something to acknowledge God about, do we not? Amen. Amen. And, 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 and so uh, nothing is going to hold this uh, demon-possessed man back from worshiping the Lord, not even, I'm going to say, 2,000-plus demons in that man. Actually, it was more than that, but I'll just use that figure right now, seeing as we're fixing to read about that. Verse 7 says, and, and cried, here he is in verse 6, he ran and worshiped, and here's what he says in verse 7, and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? In other words, why would you even come near somebody like me, somebody that is in such a poor, wretched place? But I believe in his heart he was reaching out with thanksgiving to God as well as he could because here he is. He, is, he ran and he's worshiping the Lord, and now he's crying out to him, what have I to do? And, and then, then the commentators say that it was the demons inside him crying out, saying, what have I to do? Uh, with thee, Jesus, the, thou son of the most high God, which perhaps it was. But I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say there had to be some kind of response from that man other than just the demons crying out. I do believe the demons cried out when they said this, I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. The demons inside of that man did not want to be disturbed. But I want to tell you, Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. He came to disturb the devil. And if we'll acknowledge him today as who he is and the power that he has, I'm going to tell you he can disturb some devils around here today and cast them out in Jesus' name. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> Nothing could hold him back. For he said in verse 8, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. So when Jesus, when that man fell down and worshipped him, Jesus began to speak. And his words were, come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Now I'm going to tell you, nothing could hold those spirits in that man when the master spoke. I'm going to tell you, when our master, when the Lord speaks, there's nothing that can stop what he says. Right. Hell can't stop. Amen. I said hell can't stop right. what the word of God has to say about a situation. Right. The unclean spirit in that man knew exactly who Jesus was. 
Others that heard the words of Jesus as he talked may not have known who he was, but the devils inside that man knew exactly who right. Jesus was, the Son of God, the, of the, the Son. Jesus was the Son of the Most High God. That's, right. That's who he addressed him at. And, asked. and so the demons in that man didn't want to be cast out of the wild man of Gadara. That's what some people called him, the wild man of Gadara. But when Jesus speaks, even we just learned last Sunday, the winds and the waves have to obey. That unclean spirit had come out, had to come out when the Lord Jesus said, come out That's of right. the man. Amen. There was nothing that could hold back those demons when Jesus said, come out. Hallelujah. And, and so often, so often when I pray, I, I, I refer to the Psalms. I think it is, uh, I won't even try to say where it's at, but it says, He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Right, and many times when I pray for people, I pray, God, send your word, speak your word right. into that situation. Because when the word is spoken, things happen. And I just want to tell you today, again, Jesus Christ is the same today that he was in the day that he stepped out on that shore of Galilee right. in that into that man's life. He's still the same God. He hasn't lost any power. But our faith is what hinders God from moving in our situations do we really the bible says he that but uh but without faith i believe this is hebrews 11 6 but without faith it is impossible to please god for he that cometh to god must believe that he is that he is who that he is god hallelujah that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him i want to tell you today when we call on the name of the lord and we come to him in faith believing that he is who he says he is i want to tell you there's going to be a calm that comes over us and we're going to know that faith has touched god and we, we may not see a moment that instant happen but i'm going to tell you you can rest assured god is going to to move and it's going to happen. Amen. Come on. Amen. That's why fear fights our faith so often. That's why we have so much trouble with fear in our lives because fear it it it, it puts a, a damper on our faith. Fear will if we let it it will overcome our faith. But if we'll turn it over, faith will overcome our fear. Right. Amen. We just got to turn it around. Yeah. Right. Come on. That's right. So the, the demons in that man, they didn't want to be cast out. They didn't want to leave that man. He had been, he had been doing everything they wanted him to do. The, he had like a crazy, and he was, he, was, he was a crazy individual. His, his right mind was gone from him because we're going to read a little bit later where he's in his right mind. So he's not in his right mind. Those demons that, that possessed him had him out of his mind. That's why so many people do such crazy things in the day and hour we're living in. They are demon-possessed people today. We say, I don't understand what would make a man do that. This is what would. It's called demon possession. Sister Creasy, don't get off on that kind of stuff. What we're dealing with in, in the lesson today, I, I've got a right to deal with it. Ooh, I'm telling you, if people ever got full of the Holy Ghost, you better start getting praying and get full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's right. Exactly right. So, so when, when Jesus speaks, even, even the elements have to obey. And when he said, come out of the man, those spirits had to come out. Verse 9 says, and, and he asked him, Jesus asked the man, what is thy name? And he answered saying, he didn't say my name is John. He didn't say my name is James. He didn't say my name is Lazarus. He said, my name is Legion. For we are many. What was he talking about? He was talking about the demons that was inside of him. And that's why his name was Legion, because of all the... That word Legion was a word that was used in Jesus' day, uh, referring to a main division of the Roman army, nearly equivalent to what, our, what a regiment would be known of as today. And, and uh, the, the information that I received, uh, that I looked up, it said it included a much larger number of men running from 3,000 to 6,000. So he said, the man said to Jesus, my name is Legion. So what is a legion? It's telling us here there was from 3,000, could have been from 3,000 to 6,000 demons inside that man. Yeah. Now you tell me he wasn't a tormented individual? You tell me, 
this is why he was crying night and day. There was no hope. There was no help. There was no relief. Everything about him spoke of nothing but demon possession and torment and misery. Right. And, and so there was a great number of demons inside that man. But that man had come to do what? To worship Jesus. And, and, and the thing of it is, those demons didn't want to be tormented or cast out of the country. They wanted to stay right there uh, so that they could possess someone else. The Bible said in verse 10, and he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Verse 11 says, now there were there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. That means hogs, pigs, swine. Verse 12 said, and all the devils besought him, saying, send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep hill, excuse me, steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000. So there were at least 2,000 demons in that man because there were 2,000 sheep, uh, swine, swine in, in, in that day and were choked in the sea. Now, I know if y'all think this is amusing, you'll have to pardon my amusing you. But I've always heard that pigs can't swim. Am I the only one that's ever heard that? I've heard that too. Anybody want to contest that? Well, you ought to because it says they can swim very well. I've heard all my life that hogs, pigs couldn't swim. But according to what I looked up, don't Google it now. <laughs> but they can swim. Um, but let me tell you something about, else about swine, pigs. Uh, according to the Old Testament law, pigs were considered unclean animals. Right. And you all knew that. And, and, and this meant that they couldn't be touched or eaten by Jews. Leviticus 11 and 7 says, And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven-footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. So to a Jew, a pig, a hog, a swine was, was an unclean animal. They wouldn't even touch it. Okay? So this, this, this situation took place southeast of the Sea of Galilee, which, as I talked about a while ago, was in the Gentile region, uh, according to the commentary that I read from, and that explains why there was a herd of pigs involved in this situation because the Jews wouldn't have had them on the other side where they lived. These were on the opposite side there, and of course, ev evidently, there were Gentiles there that, that these pigs belonged to. And, and it's interesting to notice, and our pa pastor makes this comment when he preaches from this scripture setting so often, and I may not be saying it word by word like he says, but his, this is him, and I'm trying to quote him, as most all of us preachers do. He says pigs wouldn't put up with the demons that were in that man that even some people put up with today. That's right. Even a hog wouldn't put up with the demons like that man was filled with the hogs drowned themselves. Right. So it wasn't the fact that they couldn't swim. They were so tormented by the demons that they drowned themselves. They didn't want to live like that. Right. Now, y'all probably Googling, aren't you, right now? Don't Google. No, 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 no. <laughs> 2,000 pigs or swine ran violently down a steep hill. That unclean spirit that had possessed one man, one man, one man. now invaded the serenity of 2,000 pigs, and they ran violently. That word violently means destructively, with vengeance, rebelliously, forcefully. These are words that describe that word violently. They, they just, they just, well, they, you know what I think? They went out of their mind. Right. If the man was out of his mind, don't you think they, the, the, the demons inside those pigs, they ain't never felt nothing like that before. Right. I mean, they're used to wallowing in the mud. They ain't used to no demons inside of them. Right. So all of a sudden, 2,000 uh, swine are drowned in the sea. Mark 5, 14 says, And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went about to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were what? Afraid. They were what? Afraid. 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 What were they afraid of? 
He's not a threat to them anymore. This wild man of Gadara went from being mentally deranged, crying, cutting himself with stones, living in the tombs and going around without any clothes on, to now he is sitting, the Bible said, and clothed and in his right mind. And he had been delivered from thousands of demons. And instead of rejoicing that this man was no longer a slave to Satan, the Bible says they, the people that came to see what had happened, they were afraid. And instead of embracing of the miracle that had happened, they let fear drive them away from the Lord. And you know what? That happens to people this day and time. Right. Instead of embracing what God has for them, they run away from God in fear. That's right. Or in doubt, or in unbelief, or, or in just rebellion. Right. People say, well, I'm, I'm just not ready to live that kind of life. What kind of life are you talking about? A life of freedom? Right. A life of liberty? A life of peace? A life of joy and happiness? Yeah. Woo! Amen. Amen, right. amen. Right. Y'all must be getting some messages that I'm not getting up here, so <clears throat> I need to get on with the, with the lesson and not let it distract me. So and he said, and they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. Why would they want somebody that had the power to deliver a man out of his mind, out of their coast? Could it be? Now, Brother Mark uses this. He uses that phrase, could it be? Could it be? That's what I'm going to use today. Could it be that the people of Gadara were more concerned over the money they lost with those pigs that went down, the, down that steep incline into the, into the sea than they were of their spiritual well-being? I said, could it be? I don't know. But could it? Do you know there's people today that are more interested in the money they make than they are with the soul that they have that's going to live in eternity? You know, there's people that rather live in sin than to be delivered from sin because of what it's going to cost them monetarily. Now, I could get a little preachy right there, but I, I won't. I, I think it will, Sister. Sister, It, it will preach. But, but we're talking about a man that was possessed of the devil, that he wouldn't let anything stop him. This man's going to be a testimony against people that let things stop them from coming to Jesus. Thank you, Pastor, for that hand clap. Right. I'm not getting many on this lesson today. I understand that. Maybe I'm not hollering enough. I don't know. You're uh, doing a great job. Yeah. But, but one translation, one translation of verse 17, which is, and they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. One tra translation said the crowd began pleading with Jesus to go away and leave them alone. You know what that tells me? Yeah. There was some people that was possessed of the devil that was there that day that they didn't want to be. De they did. They didn't want the de demons inside of them disturbed either. Yeah. Right. Leave us alone. That's what the devil is saying today, Sister Christie. Don't you get anointed? Leave them people alone. Amen. Don't get anybody excited. Leave them alone. I didn't come to leave you alone. I come to tell you, Jesus wants to set whoever's bound. He wants to set them free today. And so uh, the crowd, uh, they were making a tragic mistake that day, asking the Lord to leave them alone. You know, when people walk away from the Lord, they, t they turn and are walking right into the trap of the devil. They don't realize that. Because Satan is known. You know what Satan is? He's a thief. That's one of his handles. He's a thief. And the Bible tells us in John 10 and 10, the thief, the devil, cometh not but for to do what? To steal and to kill and to destroy. That's what his business is today. He don't want anybody getting set free. He doesn't want anybody knowing the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost. But Jesus said this. He said, I am come that they might have life and what? Mm, abundantly. Abundantly. An abundance. God wants us to have an abundance. Uh, Mark 5, 18, we're going back to our scripture setting. And when he was come into the ship, that's talking about Jesus, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. In other words, he said, Lord, I want to go with you. I, I want to go where you go. I, 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 you, what you've done for me, I don't want to ever get out of your presence. No longer was he known as the wild man of Gadara. 
uh, verse 18 said, he that had, had been, notice in verse 18, he that had been, had been possessed. He's not possessed of the devil anymore. That's He's right. been delivered from those, those demons that had tormented him night and day. He knows what it's like now to feel real freedom and real peace of mind. <laughs> That's right. Woo, I'm telling you the truth. Thank you, Jesus. Now, our, our, our choir, our, our singers, they sing a song that says, No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. And then they go into this, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I don't know if that demon, th that man that was possessed, that had been possessed of the devil, knew the word Hallelujah. But I believe he was shouting, No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. No wonder he wanted to go to be with Jesus. He didn't want to get away from what had just happened to him. He wanted to stay with the presence of the Lord. Oh, I'm telling us today, it's time that we got free. And refilled, amen, with the glory of God in our life. But we don't want to get away from the presence of the Lord. He's now a child of the King, and he's asking the Lord to let him go with him. The Bible said, prayed him that he might be with him. In other words, he's he's pleading. I believe he's pleading with the Lord. Please, Lord. Don't let me get. Don't let me have to be away from you. Let me stay in your presence. Right. How be it? The Bible said in verse nineteen, Jesus suffered him not. In other words, the Lord wouldn't let him. He wouldn't <laughs> let him go with him. But saith unto him, mm -hmm, Are you ready for this? Yeah. Go home to thy friends. Yeah. That's what our lesson title is today. Go home to thy friends. To thy friends. Go home to your friends and tell them tell how them. great tell things. Them. Yeah. How great things the Lord hath done to thee and hath had compassion on thee. This man who had been set free from demons, thousands and thousands of demons, is now being called by the Lord Jesus Christ to go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. Now wait a minute, Sister Creasy. Are you telling me the Lord's calling him to preach? The Lord's calling him to testify. Right, right. I said the Lord is calling him to testify and be a witness. He hadn't received any formal teaching. He just met the Lord. Uh, he, he, hadn't, he, hadn't, he hadn't been uh, uh, to Bible college to know how to teach or, or to be an evangelist or to be a missionary. No, but he had a testimony. That's right. And that's what I want to tell us today. Every last one of us that has been set free has a testimony. We hadn't all been called to preach. We hadn't all been called to teach. We hadn't all been called to go in the mission field. But we've all been given a testimony. Amen. That's right. He was, this man was an eyewitness to the power of the mighty God in Christ. He could tell exactly what the Lord had done for him. No one could tell it like he could tell it. I said no one could tell it like he could tell it. No one else could tell what it was like living among dead people, but he could. Nobody else could tell it like he could of what it felt like to be tormented night and day and crying, crying and crying and cutting himself with stones. Nobody could tell that like he could tell it. But now, now he, 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 could, he could witness that he was no longer a slave to the, to, the, to the devil. No longer was he in bondage, but he had been set free by the master. Yes, he could witness. And yes, he could tell his friends and his family because nobody else knew him like they knew him. That's right. Thank you, Pastor. Right. Nobody knew him like his family knew him. Right. Why, Brother Billy, your family knows the things you like to eat, some of them do. And some of them uh, knows, knows things that you like and some things you don't like. Right. Why? They're your family and your friends yeah. that go fishing or whatever you do. They, they know, well, when we go out fishing, Billy don't like this or Billy likes that. Why? Because they're your friends. They know you. They know you. I ain't never been fishing. I don't know if, if you even like to fish, Brother Billy. Oh, you do. Okay. 
I don't know that. I'm his friend, but I don't know that. But those people that know him the most know all this about him. Those people that knew this man that had been delivered, they knew everything about him that, that was visible to know. Right. What they knew was the crazy side of him. What they knew was they was glad he wasn't there to torment them anymore. Right. I'm going to say this, and some of y'all ain't going to like it. Right. But you know the only people that can stand a drunk is, is another drunk. Yeah. I'm getting a good laugh out of that, ain't I? Yeah. But it's the truth. Those, those that are sober don't want to be around a drunk. Because they act crazy. They slobber, snot, whine, and do all those things. And some of them even want to fight. Yeah, yeah, and all that kind of stuff. She even knows how to categorize them. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. The family and friends only knew that side of him. Jesus wanted them to know this side of him. This side, hallelujah, of Jesus. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, my Lord. Yes, he could witness. Yes, he could tell his friends. You know what, Brother Billy? I believe when they saw him dressed and walking like a normal individual, not screaming and crying and saying all kinds of crazy stuff, I believe they could see something before he even said a word. Hey, there's, there's that old, that old. Now, I don't know if they called him Legion or not. The devil called him Legion. There's so-and-so. Here comes trouble, some of them probably said. What's he going to do this time? You know what he did last time? He liked to tore the house apart. But not this time. There's been a change. There's been a change. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you, when Jesus Christ comes on the inside, when he sets you free, all things are passed away. Behold, all things become yeah. new. You're a brand new creature in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I know this was before Calvary, but I'm talking about this day and hour. After some of you, after you have been to Calvary, after the blood's been applied, after you've been water baptized, you've repented, been water baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And been filled with his spirit. I'm going to tell you there's a different man walking or a different woman walking in your shoes. Hallelujah. You're not the same person anymore. They knew what a mess his life had been, and now he could tell them what Jesus had done for him. He could and he would do the same for them if they would let him. Yes, he, he, yes, he could tell it. He could tell it like nobody else could tell it. Mark 5, 20 says, and he departed, talking about uh, the man that had been. I wish I'd thought of a good name for him before I got up here and taught this lesson because he ain't legion no more. The legions are gone. I said the legions are gone. He's no longer legion. He's got a he's got a brand new name. He's got a brand new walk. He's got a brand new talk. He's not the same man anymore. Mm -hmm. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis. Now that did I say this and I did a while ago? Decapolis, that was a region of ten cities because dec deca means ten. So not only was it just one city, it sounds like just one, but he began to publish in Decapolis. That was an area of ten cities. And how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. You know, this man that had been delivered and, and was ready and willing to obey the Lord, he, as he departed, the Bible says he began to publish and tell everyone what the Lord had done for him. You know, Brother Billy... And, and let, me, let me say, Brother David, because I've been picking on you all morning. But, Brother David, I believe, when, I believe as soon as he walked, turned and walked away from the Lord, I believe the first person he came to, he started telling about what the Lord had done for him. I believe it took him a long time to get back to his home and friends. You know why I believe that? Because I believe everybody he met, he said, hey, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me tell you something. Let, let, me, let me tell you what the... Oh, no, 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 you're not that... Uh, no, no, that's not you. Oh, yes, it was. I once was bound, but now I'm free. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, that's that old man I used to be. But there's a new man now. I've been delivered. You don't have to put chains on me anymore. Hallelujah. I won't do myself nor you any harm. Jesus Christ, I met the master today. Yes. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 Mm -mm -mm. The Bible said all men did marvel. What does that word marvel mean, Sister Creasy? I'm glad you asked. That means they were awestruck. Yeah. 
When he began to tell them, yeah. all men did marvel. They were amazed by what they saw and what they heard. Here was a man that they had tried to put restraints on. They used chains. They used shackles. They used fetters. Nothing, nothing would hold this man. He was the wild man. But now we see a man that has been transformed. Amen. And now he's in his right mind, and he's telling them about a man called Jesus, the one that will do for them what he did for him, the Savior of the world. Amen. A notable miracle that they could not deny. I'm going to tell you, folks, people... As pastor testifies, when, when our pastor preaches, he gives his testimony about every 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 sermon. I love it. He he gives his he, he gives his testimony, and he testifies and he says when he went back to work the next day. That's right. The next day, next his day. boss said yeah. John left here yesterday one way and he came back today a different way. They noticed, brother Billy, that there was a change in pastor's life. Well, he wasn't pastor then, but he's our pastor now. But there was a change in his life. And don't you know, when that man started talking to them, they knew, brother. They knew something was different. Where he'd been screaming and hollering and probably using bad words to them. I, I'm just being honest. We were sitting in a restaurant Saturday morning, and my husband almost got up and said something to the proprietor because the table next to us was using some bad language. It is so sad that people don't have respect for their own self, let alone people sitting close to them. And my daughter said, Dad, that's okay. And I said, well, I didn't hear it, and I think that saved a problem because that was going to be a confrontation because people don't like to be called out on their bad name talking. They don't like that. But but this man, what had happened to him, a miracle had 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 no way to be denied. And so today I, I wanna I wanna ask every one of us, are you ready for my question? Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah, yeah. I know this has been low keyed. I, and if if, if if well you had the opportunity to probably look at your phone if you were bored, so I won't even apologize. But but but, but let, here's my question to each one of us today. What has the Lord done for you? What has the Lord done for you? Are there friends of yours that need to know about Jesus and his power that he can deliver and he can save? Maybe, maybe, just maybe you have a family uh, that need to hear what has happened in your life. Just like Jesus told the delivered man of Gadara. I call him the delivered man now. That day, Jesus is telling us, go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee and hath had compassion on thee. You know, some of the hardest people to testify to and witness to is your own family. And I hate to say that, but it's the truth. For one thing, you're just, you're just a robber them or Bubba. You're just Jeff. You're just Sue. You're just Joey. But to Jesus, you're a born again child of God. Oh. Nobody knows like you know just what a change has taken place in your life. That's right. Acts 1 and 8, Jesus told them that day when just before he ascended, he said, but ye shall receive power when? After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You see, when God fills us with his spirit, that is the witness. We have witnessed that there's been a change, and he gives us the Holy Ghost. So how do we know we got the Holy Ghost? It's because we spoke in tongues. That, that is the evidence of receiving the Spirit of God. And so, so we have been changed. We've been transformed by the power of the Holy Ghost. And he said, you're going to be what? my witnesses. I know everybody don't want to hear it, but you need to tell it. I said, everybody don't want to hear it, but you need to tell it. Some people, well, they like those people in, in Gadara, at, at Gadara. Leave us alone. Don't preach to me. That's what most people say. Oh, I, I, I don't, don't preach to me. I don't want to hear that. Well, you know what it is? The devil don't want them to hear that. <laughs> but, 
But you could say, but, but, but God did this for me. I just want you to know what God did for me. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to know that God is a delivering God. Yeah. God is Come a good on. God. Yeah. And you know what? The more you witness of the goodness of God, the more that you will want to tell of his goodness and compassion in your life. Amen. Do you know what? Now, now this is going to get a little preachy. I hope y'all still love me when I get through with this. It ain't in my notes, so I can just shut this. But you know what was, you know what, what the message was to the church of Ephesus? Anybody know what, what had happened at the church of Ephesus? He said, I have somewhat against you because you have left your what? First love. First love. First love. First love. When we think about first love, do we think about what the Lord did for us and how our life has been changed? I think sometimes we get too used to being who we are and what we are, and we forget. Sometimes we have some spiritual amnesia. You say, Sister Creasy, I've been battling this, I've been battling that. I understand that. But I'm going to tell you, every one of us has got a testimony today. Every one of us has got, a, has got something we can tell others that God has done for us. And you know what? I, our sister uh, oftentimes tells me that she asked the Lord, and her name is Sister Teresa, to let her come in contact with somebody that she can witness to that day. And she said, usually without fail, God will send somebody my way that I can, visit, that I can witness to. I can't say that I say that prayer every, every day, but I'm going to say that I want to start using that for a prayer every day. That God will let me come in contact with somebody that I can witness to. You know what witnessing does? It builds your faith and it touches the person that you have witnessed to. And you know what else it does? It gives you boldness. The more you speak about the goodness of God, the more you'll want to speak about the goodness of God. The more you testify, the more you'll want to testify. Amen. The message to that man that day was go home, tell your, tell your friends. I want to, do, I want to challenge this assembly today. Go home and tell your friends today what God has done for you. Oh, I've been living for God many, many years. I'm going to tell you, God's done more for you than what he did initially when you came to him. I'm telling you, there's things God has done for you just recently that you can testify about. Hey, you say, well, I really can't say that I'm a born-again believer, but I'm telling you, if you're breathing here today, God let you come here. God let you be here for a reason. He's put something for you to do in your life, and why don't you just obey what God's telling you through this Sunday school? lesson today. Why don't you get where you need to be with God? Why don't you say, Lord, I want what you've got for me. I want to be changed. I want to be a witness for you, Jesus. I want to tell others about you. You get the witness on the inside of you and you can witness to it. I want to tell saints of God that haven't shared your testimony in a long time. It's time to tell others about Jesus Christ, what he has done for you. God bless you today in Jesus' name.